kids, I'm Pastor Aaron, and I'm glad you could join us again this week. We're going to continue learning about Jesus and his life. Last week we looked at the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Because of Easter, we skipped ahead a little bit, but we're going to go back to where we were as we continue learning about Jesus and his life and what that means to us. But before we get into the lesson, uh, let's pray and ask God to be with us this morning. Dear Lord, I just ask that you would work in our hearts this morning. I thank you that we can all be here today, and I thank you for each uh, boy and girl as we can come together and learn about you. I ask, Lord, that you would work in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, our lesson today is found in the book of Luke, chapter 4, verses 1 through 14. And let's go ahead and start getting into the lesson. So here we are, as I said, you can also find it in Matthew 4, 1 through 11, but Luke 4, 1 through 14 is the passage we're going to be looking at and reading from. And we're going to be looking at Jesus as he's tempted in the wilderness. So as we begin going into this lesson here, there's a couple things we need to learn and something we're going to ask ourselves. The first thing we're going to learn is that Jesus did not sin. That's important. Jesus is God and Jesus was born on this earth and was also man. Now all men are sinners. We're going to learn a little bit more about that in a moment. But Jesus did not sin. And because Jesus did not sin, he could die for our sins. And so we learn next that although Jesus did not sin, all people are sinners. Every single person is born a sinner. Sin is breaking God's law. Sin is, is choosing ourselves and not choosing to follow God and do what he says and commands. And last, we need to ask ourselves this question. Have I asked God to forgive my sins? Now, some of you, boys and girls, have never asked Jesus to save you from your sin. While well, all people are sin, sinners, and all sinners, the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, all sinners are going to be punished for their sin. But... God sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. And so we need to ask ourselves, you need to ask yourself, have I asked God to forgive my sins? And if you have trusted Christ as your Savior, even though we, we, when we come to Christ, we ask him to save us from our sins, and that's what we only do that once, and then our sins are forgiven. But we still make mistakes and we still sin. And we still need to come and ask God to forgive us uh, each day. We don't need to get saved over and over again, but we do need to ask him to forgive us of the sins that we commit. Well, as we learned, Jesus did not commit sin. And so let's uh, begin going in the passage in the lesson here. And in the passage in Luke, it says, Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. So Jesus went off by himself into the wilderness. Why did he do this? He did this to get be close to God and just to have some time alone. Uh, each one of us needs to do this sometimes. We need to make sure that even each day we're spending time alone with God, uh, reading his word or looking at uh, stories and pictures about Jesus and learning about him. Well, it says that when he went into the desert that he was there for 40 days, so a little over a month, and he didn't eat anything. <clears throat> Now, how, what's, how long have you gone without eating anything? I bet you most of you can't even go a few hours. We certainly can't go a day. There are some children in the world that 
go hungry for several days. And that's a, a horrible and a sad thing. But Jesus, on purpose, went without food for 40 days, and he did this so that he could be closer to God. Well, as we continue learning about him here, uh, verse 3 says that, uh, And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. So Satan comes to Jesus, and he's trying to tempt Jesus and trying to get him to sin, because he knows if Jesus sins, then Jesus cannot die for your sin and my sin. And so he also is trying to get Jesus to deny the authority of God in his life. And so he tells Jesus, well, if you're hungry, then why don't you turn this stone into bread? Well, the problem with that is that if Jesus does that, then what he's doing is he's saying that God isn't going to provide for his needs, and so he has to do it on his own. In other words, he's saying that Satan is the one that's going to provide for his needs. And this would be wrong. This would be a sin. God is always going to provide our needs. Well, we know that Jesus did not sin. And we know that Jesus answered him, and said, uh, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. That means the Bible. It's not just physical food that we need to eat. It's spiritual food that we need to eat. We need to be learning about God and learning about Jesus from his word. But the idea is that God will provide the food. And if I do this, then I am not trusting in God the Father. <clears throat> well, as we continue learning here in the lesson, we see that Satan continues to tempt Jesus. And in verse 9, it says that he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. And he keeps saying, if you be the Son of God, Satan really is trying to question who God is and who Jesus is and question that Jesus is really God. So he says, well, if you're really who you say you are, if you throw yourself down off of this place, uh, then, then God will protect you. And there they are up on the temple up on a high pinnacle and in verses uh, 10 and 12, 10 through 12 he says it is satan says for it is written he shall give his angels charge of thee to keep thee and in their hands they shall bear thee up lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone now satan's quote quoting the bible but he's misquoting it and he's trying to mislead Jesus. And he says, well, if you're really the Messiah, the one that God has sent, if you're really God's son, then God's going to protect you. And he's, he's questioning God's authority. He's trying to get Jesus to question God's authority. And Jesus says, no. And Jesus answers Satan. He uh before we get to the next slide there, Jesus answered him uh, and said, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And that's exactly what Satan is trying to do. Well, then the devil takes Jesus to a very high mountain and shows him all the kings, kingdoms of the world. Verse 5, And the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed him unto, unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will give it. So now Satan is saying, If you bow down to me and worship me, 
then I will give you all of these things. Well, first off, God is the one that owns all things, not Satan. And the Bible says very clearly that we are to worship only the true God, only worship God. And Satan wants Jesus to bow down and worship him. Well, Jesus responds to him and says in verse 8, Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. It's only God that we should worship. There's a lot of things that we put before God. Maybe it's time playing with toys or with our friends, or maybe it's uh, whatever we like to do, uh, video games or playing, or there's lots of things that we can put before God, even school, and even good things. But if we do them before God, that's wrong. Well, we know that uh, Satan tried three times to tempt Jesus, but Jesus would not sin. And Jesus, of course, is God, and God does not sin. God is holy. We know that after Satan tried tempting Jesus, that uh, when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And then after this time, uh, some angels came and gave Jesus food and water, food to eat and water to drink. Well, Satan tried his best to get Jesus to sin, but he didn't. We know that Satan came and tempted Adam and Eve to sin, and they did sin. And when they sinned, sin came to all people. Every single person is a sinner. And because of our sin, we deserve to go to hell. We deserve punishment. But God doesn't want that to happen to us. And that's why God sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. So remember, I said there were some things we needed to learn and a question to ask ourselves. Jesus did not sin ever. He's the only human being that never sinned. Jesus did not sin. But all people are sinners. That means you're a sinner and that means I'm a sinner. And our sin deserves to be punished. But God sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. And so then we ask ourselves this question. Have I asked God to forgive my sins? First, we, ask, we need to know that we're sinners. And the only way to receive forgiveness of our sin is to come to Jesus and ask him to save us from our sins. And trust him to choose God and not ourselves. And we choose God, and we choose God in His way. If we've done this, then we are saved. And God has forgiven us of our sin, and He's washed us clean, washed us white as snow. Does that mean that we're perfect and we no longer ever sin? No, we still sin. So then we got to ask ourselves, have I asked God for, to forgive me of my sins today? We don't have to keep asking God to save us from our sins. We don't have to keep getting saved. But we do need to confess when we do wrong and ask God to forgive us. Well, I hope that you've learned a lot in this lesson today. It wasn't a very long lesson, but teaches us a little bit about Jesus and how Jesus was perfect and he never sinned. And he lived this way for you and me so that he could die for our sins, so that we could have a home in heaven and have our sins forgiven. Well, we'll see you again next week. But before we go, let's just pray and seek God. God, I thank you for uh, being here with us today.
I thank you, Lord, for sending Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. I ask that if there's anyone out there today that needs to know that they have their sins forgiven and have a home in heaven, Lord, that they would come to you and ask you to save them from their sins. Lord, I thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, again, glad you could be with us. We hope to see you next week. Bye. Have a good day.